In this third episode, we shall look back on the earlier two episodes and measure it against the law of karma. We shall also draw a comparison between the Ramayana and Mahabharata characters. This is in reference to the ending of the previous episode. At this point, many people might wonder as to why the Pandavas had to experience such adversity despite their dharmic character. Reading or hearing the Shastras without insight and inner learning hardly conveys the message to the soul. It is best understood that Itihasas and Puranas are a direct interpretation of our own lives. Only the characters seem to be different. We may ask this question because in real life too, we see good people suffer. We must understand that characters in the Puranas and Itihasas have their own nature. There hardly seems to be any difference between their inner nature and how we are at our very core. We are all people who have grey shades. There are some shades of grey tending to black while certain other grey shades tend towards white. But then all of them are verily grey shades. The Ramayana is a scripture that tends towards whiteness where although there are dark characters like Ravana, Surpanakha, Manthara, etc., there are people with white shades who outnumber the darker shades, such as the four forms of the Lord, namely Sri Rama, Sri Lakshmana, Sri Bharata and Sri Shatrughana, Jatayu, the Vanaras, etc. You name it, all of them are white characters. But if you see the Mahabharata, most of the main characters are shaded dark, like King Dhritarashtra, his son Duryodhana and his 99 brothers, their brother-in-law Jayadrata, etc. Even the bright-shaded Gandhari becomes dark when Kunti Devi gives birth to the first Pandava before her own delivery. At that moment, Gandhari gets overpowered by envy and in a fit of rage, she thumps her womb, resulting in a lump of flesh. The white-shaded Bhishma had to support the evil King Dhritarashtra on the pretext of his promise given to his father, King Shantanu. King Yudhishthira, although known as Dharmaraja, was addicted to gambling. It is only Lord Shri Krishna who is completely free of the frailties of the human nature in this great epic. Otherwise, darkness prevails over almost every character of the Mahabharata. The main teaching of the Aranya Parva highlights the immediate effects of karma. Sometimes, karma takes a long time to manifest and carry to the next lifetime. Usually, it is seen that when a dharmatma or an ideal character performs an act that is prohibited by the scriptures, the karma effect manifests immediately so that the noble soul is not punished in the next lifetime. Often people of this world wonder why they are being punished for a crime they have never done. This is because the crime was done in an earlier lifetime. Dharmaraja gambled and lost his kingdom, brothers and even his wife on the gambling board. This was a dharma. None of them was owned by Dharmaraja as everything was provided to him by the Lord. Casting them away in a game of dice is an offence as the very act of gambling is prohibited by the Sattvika scriptures. This event occurred at a time when Kalyuga was knocking at the door. Gambling did not have much relevance in the earlier yugas because most of the population was sane and knew their limits. But at the advent of Kalyuga, gambling gained prevalence. In the current context, even putting money on shares is a type of gambling. Shares are manipulated by broker cartels and the common man falls prey to this habit because of greed and empty dreams about the future. With gambling, nobody can build a fortune. Fortunes are built if you have that karma, whether you invest in shares or not. Fortune in terms of wealth is a form of material blessing, a reward for our good karmas of the past, nothing more than that. People feel that they have attained money because of the right investment but fail to realize that when good times and good karma meet, it generates wealth. This wealth can come even with a simple act where the efforts may not justify the rich outcomes. The greatness of Dharmaraja Yudhishthira is that he immediately accepted his flaws and atoned for his sins. He was also punished immediately by nature and the results of his action meant a 12-year exile and one year of incognito servitude at the kingdom of Virat. Noble souls like Dharmaraja can make mistakes but they are never left high and dry by the Lord because they are his surrendered devotees. Devotees are human beings after all and may commit errors but they always lay themselves bare to the will of the Lord and do not try to cover up by giving weight to their personal egos. 
the lord is always on the side of such sincere devotees it is the duty of kshatriyas to protect the rights of the people whom they represent continuing with the story although yudhishthira and his brothers were in exile they never gave up their kshatriya dharma even in this case when the brahmana approached them for the arani sticks which are used to light the sacrificial agni the pandavas took it upon themselves to protect the needs of their subjects although they themselves were in exile this is the nature of true kshatriyas when a person does his duties even if there is some trouble in it even if it seems to give counter results it shall ultimately work for the overall benefit of the person his sincerity towards his duty or swadharma shall reap the fruits when the five pandavas chased the stag that had the arani sticks wound to its head the lord manifested a leela by which the bad time was defeated without direct interference thus upholding the rules of nature as well as saving the devotee from ultimate disaster duryodhana had created a kritya using black magic a kritya is supposed to achieve her goals at any cost in this case the kritya had to slay the pandavas but if the pandavas are already dead then the kritya returns as the goal would have already been achieved even before she set out to kill them in the life of the pandavas lord krishna introduced the yaksha who temporarily slew four of the pandavas so that the kritya would return assuming that her task had already been accomplished this is the hand of bhagavan in the next episode we shall cover the story of the crane the main character behind the mysterious pond